Okay. So um, once you've installed Postgres, you should be able to um, uh, uh, see which version of Postgres you have installed. Uh, I, I advise getting to the most the most recent version of Postgres 13, but really anything from I don't know version 11 will, will work fine. Um, uh, so uh, you'll know that you've got an installation of Postgres uh, uh, when you can uh, run the PSCOL command from your terminal on Mac OS. If you're Windows, you might you might have to go to your program files and just launch a separate uh, 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 command line uh, interface session. Um, and you should be able to have access to it. It'll launch you into something like this, um, as if you've done uh, run the PSCOL command directly, and it will launch you into an interactive session. Um, uh, so depending on uh, which operating system you're on, uh, it will, will depend on how you uh, interact with it. But what we want to be able to do is interact with our database server. Uh, and the way that we do that is by connecting to it. Um, so uh, let's, um, uh, let's do the first step here, which is to create a database named Bookmark Manager. Um, uh, I can, uh, once you've installed it uh, from uh, uh, whatever uh, installation process you chose, whether you're on Mac OS or Windows, uh, you should have access to a command line command uh, to be able to create a database, create DB. You should have access to create DB and also drop DB. Um, so let's create, uh, create a database called uh, Bookmark Manager. Um, and uh, let's then connect to it. So let's go look our manager. Okay, so we're in, uh, 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 we're connected to this database. It's absolutely empty. I can have a look at it by using uh, the command backslash dt to display tables, short for display tables. Um, and it's calling kind of empty. There are no tables in this database. All right, I can list all, all um, uh, databases by going backslash L. These are all the current databases available on my server, my database server. Um, and so, so uh, we can have um, a, a look at any of these. This is the one I just created. Um, bookmark manager. Um, so this is create a database named bookmark manager. In this table, create a table. Uh, named bookmarks with two columns. Let's have a quick look at uh, the create a table command. And so this is one of the resources I've linked at the bottom here. It's probably one of these ones. Uh, create table. Yes, I want to go to this one, there it is. Uh, is it not here, create? Select from table, that's where you select. Create drop table, create tables, we'll be up here somewhere, there we are. Managing tables, create a new table or a temporary table. Create table and then the table name um, and here I can uh, add in some information. So um, when we create a table, as we'll explore this week, um, there's um, a, an important piece of information we have to make sure we include, which is its primary key. And um, this is gonna be how any other tables would, will relate to it uh, uh, if um, we associate it with other tables. So every table needs to have a primary key. Um, and uh, usually this will be in the form of a column that's, uh, that's unique, uh, like an ID column. Um, and so you'll always have unique IDs. Usually IDs can be numbers. Uh, and usually we maintain um, uh, individual unique numbers for every uh, row in the table. So if you uh, give it this instruction, your table uh, will, uh, will identify this uh, column as its primary key. Now it's not always ID as the primary key. You might want to use primary keys on email, for example, uh, if you're using a user's table. Uh, it's anything that should be unique and you can uh, query it. So, for the most part, 95% of cases, you'll use an ID column, all right? And uh, this serial uh, type is saying to the database to manage uh, uh, incrementing uh, that number. So we don't we won't have to worry about uh, inserting it manually ourselves. It will, the, the database will take care of it. 
So it's essentially giving us a way to add data to this column for the database to know how to handle it. Um, and we're giving this instruction uh, in a series of comma separated uh, um, uh, lines here. Um, so if I were to do it here, uh, I would do something like uh, create table, create table, and then my table name, I'm calling it bookmarks, I think that's what I have to do, right? Create a table name bookmarks with two columns. And I create table, and my table name is bookmarks, and then I have to have a set of brackets. Um, and um, uh, I want to name my first um, uh, column ID. Uh, that's the instruction here. First uh, name is ID. Um, uh, go away, dictionary. Um, and I want my type to be serial and primary key. So serial is the type and then primary key is the extra data, a constraint on the field to say this is the, the, the primary key. Um, so uh, ID serial primary key, that's the first column, uh, separated by a, a comma. Um, and I want my next uh, column to be URL. Uh, so URL, and then what's the type going to be? Well, in the instruction, it says uh, varcard. So this is a variable character type. Um, uh, so this will say it should be like a text. Essentially, think of it as like type text, uh, but with usually a specified limit of how many characters this type can accept. And this is saying with a maximum length of 60 characters. Um, so let's say it's going to be this type and specify the limit of 60 characters. Let's go back to the instruction here. Uh, create table, uh, this is the name, bookmarks, um, and these are um, uh, the constraints. Uh, da -da -da, one, closing, and then always remember the semicolon. Okay, so I've issued an instruction to my database uh, a server to create a table within my bookmark manager database. The name is bookmarks and it's got two columns. So let's have a look um, uh, at it. I'm going to use a select query, select everything from bookmarks. Uh, this will show me everything in this table. And this is what it currently looks like at the moment this lovely depiction in my, in my command line interface of my table, ID and URL. It's actually empty because I haven't added any, any, any data into it, but I've successfully created the table uh, with um, uh, these two columns. So I, I should be able to see it when I add display all tables. Uh, I can see here uh, uh, what my uh, database calls a list of relations. A relation is synonymous with a table. All right, so you can think of a relation as a table. Um, uh, and it gives me the name uh, of it. So if I ever want to query it, I query it by name. So this is um, uh, how you could how to create a table. Um, I'm going to um, uh, uh, just store this SQL. So if I want to come back to it, I have to keep searching for it. And I'm going to just keep it in a file here, just in case, create table bookmark, let's call it. Um, just in case I were to need it again. Um, okay, so then it says use SQL to select, insert, update, and delete data into and from this table. So I've done the select query uh, just to share everything inside of it. We'll come back to the select in a second. I want to actually add some data into this table. So let's go back to my, 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 uh, a sort of set of um, uh, commands that I can have a look at. And what I want to find is an insert into. Insert a new row into the table. And so I can add data to my table. Um, so uh, insert into table, give it the column names and the values that I want. So insert uh, into, and then the name of its bookmarks. Um, and I don't need to insert into the ID column because that should be handled automatically. Um, uh, so I should be able to just say um, a URL. I want to insert into bookmarks. Uh, the column I want to add is the URL column. Um, and then I have to say values. What are the values for this? Um, uh, let's say 
a little bit test, like, like so. And you can see here, it gives me a result of saying how many uh, uh, rows were, were essentially what were touched, how many rows uh, were, were handled. Um, so if I then have a look at my, um, uh, my table using my select command again, I can see that I've successfully added um, a, a row into my table. Um, my ID has been uh, generated automatically. So if I were to uh, insert another one, let's say uh, new, for example, and select, the, uh, that ID is being automatically incremented. I don't need to worry about it and because I've indicated it is a serial. So because I'm using the type serial, the database will handle it for me. Um, so I'm just adding data uh, into this table um, uh, using an insert statement. Um, uh, let's have a look at updating uh, one of the rows. Uh, so if I go update, let's actually find it rather than do it from memory. Update, here we are. Update data for a specified row. Let's do this. Um, update uh, bookmarks. That's the table I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to update. Um, uh, but I want to set up uh, values. Let's say let's change the URL. Set URL to be new uh, as a string. Um, and I have to provide a specific clause to say which rows to be updated. So let's say where ID is two. So that gives you uh, a confirmation that it's accepted uh, uh, successfully. Um, and I can double check by running my select command again. Um, uh, did I, well, clearly, let's actually use a different one. Let's go uh, update it because we didn't actually have any visual evidence. We saw some actual evidence here saying it was updated, but they did the same thing. Why I chose to do that, I'm not sure. Um, so we're gonna update uh, this one to say, rather than the new, we're going to update it, all right? So you can see it's now uh, changed. Um, so I'm always using my select command to read from my table. Uh, select just reads it, just gets information. Uh, the update uh, changes uh, a certain uh, row, uh, some parts of it, uh, some data in it, and the insert adds rows. Um, uh, the last one let's have a look at is the delete. Let's delete some data. And let's delete my uh, original one. So delete from bookmarks uh, where ID is one. Um, uh, notice I, I'm, I'm using capital sometimes. Um, I try to, uh, uh, it's all, it doesn't really matter whether you use capitals or lowercase. Um, it's mostly just stylistic to say what's like an SQL command uh, um, and what's like a table name, for example, or a column name. Um, but it would always work if it were just lowercase, all right? Boom marks, that should be new. <clears throat> so I successfully removed one of those uh, uh, rows from my table. Um, so uh, I created a table. I, uh, I created a table with two columns. Um, one was a serial uh, primary key. Um, and there's something that always has to be a primary key in a table. Um, and uh, the second column was a, 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 a varchar type, a variable character with a fixed length of 60. Um, and you'll see if I uh, try to insert into this, let's try and uh, new a very long URL that is, oh, I keep doing spaces, doesn't really matter, that is longer than uh, 60 characters. I hope this is actually longer than 60. Um, and then you get that error back because it um, uh, uh, went to the database. Database was like, actually, sorry, we can't because there's a constraint on this field with a length of 60 on this type. Uh, so you can't actually successfully um, add this to the database. And so it gives you back an error message. Uh, too long for type character. Um, cool. 
so that's just a, a, um, something that you will to see um, uh, uh, the result of specifying that limit of 60 characters. Um, uh, okay, so then uh, then there's one here which is start and stop your database server. This instruction here is to, to make sure that you have an idea in your head that um, you have to run the server in the way that you've been running your applications using uh, uh, Node uh, to actually then interact with them, same way with your, with your database. Um, so if I quit out of this for a moment, um, uh, on, on Mac OS, you, um, or and probably also on any Linux base, you probably should also be able to do this on, on Git Bash and Windows. But if you have a look at your processes and then search for Postgres, if, you're, if it's running, um, uh, you'll see that um, uh, there's, there's, some, there's some process that's running Postgres. There's some uh, uh, current active process where your database server is running. Um, and you can, you can sort of configure this to happen automatically whenever you, uh, uh, your computer starts or you open up a new terminal shell, um, or you can have it entirely manual and, uh, and, and control when, it's, when it starts and stops. Uh, you just have to make sure that uh, it is running when you want to interact with it. So if I, if I stop it, and, I, and you can either do it um, uh, the nice way, which is however you've started it, you can use it to stop. So if you're using Homebrew or Mac OS, which I think some of you are, some of you won't be. Um, you can do something like this. Um, it doesn't really matter which operating system you, you, you're using. The purpose is to make sure you understand that there is a server that's running and it has to run for you to be able to interact with it. So now that I've stopped my, my database server uh, at the moment, I can't interact with it. So I try and, and connect back to my, my command line client for uh, my database server. Let's go back to bookmark. Uh, manager, for example, it gives me an error saying I can't connect to it, all right, because it's not running, which is clearly intuitively makes sense. But just just keep that in mind. Sometimes uh, it has to be a server that's running, and you can make sure it's running in the background somewhere, uh, so you don't have to worry about it. Or you run it, you start and stop it whenever you need it. Um, uh, so um, let's bring it back up. Um, And I uh, should be able to now access it. So uh, sometimes when on installation, it will it will it will all be all set up for you, and you can uh, just always access it. And uh, sometimes you want a little bit more control over it, and you can start and stop it as you want. Um, so this is the point of this one, just knowing that it has to be running for you to be able to access it. It's not like your file system, which is just always there. You have to run the server uh, uh, for it to be able to. Uh, accept commands. Uh, this one, drop your table and then the database and then recreate them. Um, uh, okay, uh, let's um, drop DB. Actually, we should probably have dropped table first. Uh, drop table bookmarks. Um, uh, so you can use the drop table in the same way, which is the inverse of the create table. Uh, we can drop the table, and so we now no longer have um, any tables inside of my bookmark manager database. Um, uh, any relations? Remember, relations are synonymous with tables for the most part. There is a difference, but we can think of them as similar for the moment. Um, uh, drop your table and then drop the database. Um, so you can either use a drop database, but I can't do it at the moment because I'm actually connected to it. So it will just throw me an error. Uh, quotation marks to make sure we can recognize it. Uh, so we can't drop a currently open database because I am connected to it. You can see which database you're connected to on the left hand side here. Um, a, uh, in addition, you can always tell whether you have an open command. This sometimes trips up, uh, trips a few of you up. Um, the equal sign here on the left shows you that you're, you're at the beginning of a new command. But if, say, for example, you haven't pressed um, uh, uh, the semicolon to finish the statement, it will show you a single dash here rather than the equal sign. And this shows you that you are currently in an open command. It hasn't yet finished. And, uh, 
so uh, just always check because sometimes you might hit enter expect something to happen and nothing happens because you haven't finished the statement so you can just uh, at that point just use semicolon to end the statement and then it will it will, it will uh, figure out what to do uh, and then we'll go back to the two uh, the equal sign array um, uh, what were we trying to do we were trying to drop the database um, so let's connect to a different database uh, let's Go to let's go to this one, um, and then let's go drop database uh, bookmark manager. Cool. So I should now no longer see this bookmark manager uh, database. Let's have a look, and it's now gone. Um, you can also drop uh, databases if you have access to the create db command here. You also have, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you can also do drop db uh, as your uh, command. So if I want to drop this one, for example, uh, I can. Uh, essentially, try not to drop databases if you can help it because um, um, you might accidentally drop uh, lots of data that you need and that's quite destructive. You can't really get them back very easily, all right? Um, so I probably shouldn't have done that. I don't know what was inside that, but it doesn't really matter. It's called test. I probably usually name things as test if I don't really care about them. Um, um, so uh, we can definitely go back and have a look at that. So let's uh, see what's still here. Uh, there's my current databases. So I did drop it, which is good. Okay, drop table, drop then database, and then recreate them. All right, so I'm asking you to do lots of creating and dropping. Storm the SQL, you want to recreate the table in the migration folder. So I already did that because I remember having to do this beforehand. So let's go ahead and now recreate everything from scratch. So uh, I want to create database um, uh, bookmark manager. I think I'm going to need double quotes for this. Cool. So create database. Let's have a look. Uh, let's connect to it. Bookmark manager. You are now connected to the database. And let's go ahead and create the table. So I'm just going to grab that and create it. So then I should have my, my table again. Um, cool. So, so far, so good. Now I've stored it in uh, this directory called migrations. Um, uh, what the, the purpose of this is to try and track the change from scratch of your database. So you'll, uh, in any normal application, you might have an any web team, 10 to a hundred, maybe even more different changes that incrementally change the, de the design of your, your, your database by creating more tables, by adding columns to tables, by removing columns, by adding constraints. As applications grow, you want to be able to track the change that's happened in history. And so uh, at some point, this will be done automatically. Any change that happens, uh, you'll be using code to do this rather than manually storing uh, uh, SQL commands. But this is just to get you uh, thinking about uh, tracking the change to your, to your database. And we call any change to the database or a schema a migration from one state to another state, which is why it's called a migrations directory. Um, um, so that's the, so the, the context here. Um, number six here, find, uh, find use, okay, uh, find and use, a little, little missing word here, uh, find and use a graphical interface to connect to your database server. So if you if you installed a Postgres through Windows, it's likely you, it came with an installation of PG admin, which is a graphical interface. You can also um, uh, install uh, another one uh, called Table Plus. So it's entirely up to you which graphical interface you use. You can use the one that came with Postgres. If you're on Mac OS, uh, I invite you to uh, install um, uh, an application called Table Plus. Um, you can always uh, have a quick Google um, uh, Table Plus installation or download, maybe. Um, 
and you can have a look at uh, what you want. Um, what we're looking for is just um, like an application uh, that's usually easier to read or interact with than always accessing it through your command line interface. But, and you can be able to choose which one you use to interact with it. Uh, there are pros and cons to both. So let's have a look at using uh, Table Plus. Uh, there'll be some similar versions, some similar uh, connection process when you use PG Admin, so which is the default uh, 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 graphical interface when you install it via Windows. Um, uh, but for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to use Table Plus. Um, uh, so once you've installed it, you can open it up, and you'll have to find some way to create a new connection. Um, uh, I've already done it here, so let's delete this once we do it from scratch. Um, uh, you want to be able to connect to a Postgres database. Every uh, type of uh, database, you can see lots of different types of databases here, um, have uh, their own uh, drivers, their own sort of connections. Uh, so you have to make sure you choose the right one. Um, I, uh, during this course, we'll likely use uh, Postgres um, only. Uh, might be one other we use, but won't be Amazon Redshift. Um, uh, so let's go create. Um, and because it's all running locally, we don't need to provide any uh, sort of external addresses. Uh, you can give it like a little nickname, uh, test connection maybe, um, local host. Um, and all of these are the default values. So you can keep those as default values for the host. This is local, this is the, the, the default value for your local host connection and for the port. Um, and if you set up your uh, database with any default usernames or passwords, definitely add them in here. Uh, the one that's important is making sure we connect to the right database. So here is going to be bookmark manager. Um, again, uh, uh, if you're on Windows, you'll need, you'll need to make sure you uh, connect using your user and password. I think it automatically asks you to set up your user and password. On Mac OS, uh, sometimes it's like you don't have to. Uh, so just make sure if you do, if you have to set up, you provide that, that information here. Um, so let's test the connection. Cool, it's all green, so let's connect to it. And we can see that I have my, my bookmarks table with an ID and URL, um, and it gives me information about it. And I can do the same thing interacting with it. I can click on this SQL. Um, uh, please don't buy it. Just always go later. Uh, you can always use the free, the free version of, of uh, Table Plus. There's no need to buy it. Um, uh, you can do the same, uh, select everything from uh, bookmarks. And then uh, you should be able to just run. And it will, it will give you everything inside of it. Clearly, there's no data inside of it at the moment. So uh, sometimes this is a, like a nice application to use to interact with the database and your tables. Uh, you can connect to different, different databases and you can have a look at all the different tables um, uh, accordingly. And you can open new databases and all the ones that are currently stored in your version of Postgres. Um, so, so this is an example of how we connect to our database using a graphical interface rather than our command line interface. So both are possible here, depending on which one, which one you prefer. Sometimes you'd be using both. Um, so those are the, the six instructions uh, uh, sort of demonstrated uh, uh, to go through. And um, I'll stop this recording and now.